up the recording. Okay, awesome. Welcome everyone. Um, first of all, before we kick it off, why this training? Why a training on the topic, how to actually win a grant? Grants are a wonderful way to build capacity for your organization, right? Depending on the grant that you get, you might be even able to hire new staff or um, of course you will be able to expand your programming, you will be able to serve more people, make more impact. Pretty straightforward, right? Um, there is also lots of funding available. Private foundations give out around $90 billion a year to nonprofit organizations. And there is lots of opportunity. Here in the US, we have around 75,000 foundations. And some of them accept proposals on, a, on an ongoing basis. And some of them open RFPs or open grant cycles throughout the year. Lots of funding, lots of opportunities, and a great way to build capacity. But as some of you might have noticed, it's actually not that straightforward to win a grant. Writing it, finding the opportunity seems pretty obvious. Um, but the problem is, grants are actually not easy money. And I have experienced that myself. Um, I used to be the executive director for a small nonprofit organization. We had a quarter million dollar budget and we were mostly funded through federal grants. So I had lots of experience in, in grant writing. And when I came here to the United States, I thought, where would I fit into the local nonprofit scene? And I found an organization that I really liked, Boston Scores, a local um, after school program. And they offered me the role as a grants and communications manager. And I thought, I know how to write grants. Uh, communications is something that I'm really interested in. So why not give this a shot? So um, what I thought grant writing was all about is that I spent some time finding an opportunity and then spent the majority of my effort and also my time on writing it, writing, writing the grant, writing the proposal, right? And because I wanted to be really good at it, I got lots of books on how to write well. I worked all the way through um, Strunk and White. I don't know whether anyone is familiar with, the, um, with this seminal work on how to write well. Um, it's a great book. Um, I won't. Uh, I won't deny that. Um, and once I got rid of all the dangling modifiers in my language or in my writing, and once I turned all the um, passive voice into active voice, and once I figured out how to um, actually place commas in my writing, I thought, okay, now that I know how to write well, I need to figure out how to write convincingly. So I got into copywriting, got this, this great book on, on how to write copy, um, can only recommend it. And of course, I was also attending lots of grant writing webinars, trainings, um, that was all before COVID. So I, I, I took all the resources that I, I could get. And what happened was that I actually became a pretty decent writer and the thing that did not happen though, is that I saw the results of um, my efforts. I was writing all these beautiful proposals, but what happened was that I did not get the funding that I applied for. So what was the problem? How do you actually win a grant? Does anyone have a clue of about what I did wrong or what I could have done better? because I did all the things in my mind. I wrote the grants, I got a, became a really good writer. You can come off mute or you can post in, in the chat. Any ideas? Build a relationship and learn more about the foundation that you were applying for. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel is a pro, um, we've been working together. So um, yeah, that's, um, that's exactly where I'm aiming at. And to emphasize this, I actually want to, um, stop sharing my screen for a second um, and give you this analogy. 
you can see this, and this might, might be a little silly. This is a glove, right? And what a funding opportunity actually should feel like to you is as if it's a fit like a hand in a glove, right? So if you look at this glove, this glove is probably made for skiing. It's designed for really, really cold weather and not what I really need right now, right? So this, this might not be a good fit for me. So if we look at this glove, this, um, this is a little silly. Um, this glove is obviously designed to for, for the shower to, to wash my body, also not what I, what I really um, need right now. And um, then we have this glove, which is a perfect fit. And it even comes with great features. It has these little, um, you know, these little uh, pads at the, at, the, at the top with which you can operate your phone. So this seems like a great opportunity to me. And if you only take away one thing from today's session, I want you to remember this glove, this glove analogy. Because foundations have their own missions in this world, right? Most foundations are nonprofit organizations, so they have their own missions, just like you have your mission. And they want to achieve this mission with the help of nonprofit organizations. That's why they give out funding, right? A lot of times we think about foundations and, and our work as, as nonprofit employees or um, as executives at, at nonprofits or brand writers as a power dynamic. And I think that is actually not really, really helpful. And I like this analogy of the glove and, and how we are working towards the same goal, keeping a hand warm in this case, much, much more relevant and much more helpful. So let me go back to sharing my screen. So let's go back to where we left it off. Um, it is, so what um, winning a grant is all about, what it depends on is finding alignment with the funder. So, Going back to the chart, your time and effort should actually be spent the other way around. And that is a, such a common misconception that I come across all the time. And that actually a lot of um, nonprofits come to me in saying, we, we just don't, don't win any grants and we don't know what's going on because we write all these proposals and um, have all these, these, find all these opportunities, but somehow we don't get the funding. So, um, this chart is to emphasize how you should actually spend your, your effort. You will spend 80% of your efforts in finding opportunities, finding a great opportunity which aligns with um, whatever you're trying to do. You research this opportunity and this foundation to find out more about the foundation, whether they actually do what you um, want to get funded or whether they actually in, are interested in, in this type of work that you do. And then you reach out, as Rachel said just, just now, you reach out and build a relationship because ultimately, if you want funding from someone, they need to know, like, and trust you. So this is where you spend the majority of your effort and only 20% of the effort is actually spent on writing the, the actual proposal. And once you have figured out, you know, who is this funder? What do they exactly fund? And are we in alignment? The writing will be so, so simple and just flow from, from the research that you have done and the, the relationship that you have established. And what I wanna do next is to actually walk you through the different steps of finding, researching, researching cultivating and um, the funder and then writing the proposal. So that is really clear to you how we, we make sure that we are really aligned and um, fit this opportunity like a hand in a glove. Okay, so uh, next slide. Um, where do we find opportunities? Um, again, feel free to come off mute. 
um, or to share in the chat, where do you usually find opportunities? Guide Star, Grant Station, Grant Station, that's one. Um, I just recently started getting some emails from a guy, I believe his name is John Morris, and I'll double check it. Um, but he sends out information about different grants that are available all across the country. There's also Grant Watch. There's a couple different ones, Foundation Center. Uh, but a lot of that stuff costs money. So, um, you know, we're fortunate in Ventura County where I live because uh, we have the Ventura County Community, Community Foundation, which has computers where you can search for grants. So you should, wherever any of you live, you should see if there's a community organization that helps nonprofits grow by offering them some type of support like that. Great answers, yeah. And I see some more answers coming in in the chat. Um, David says, Charity Navigator. Sarah also said, Foundation Directory Online. And then of course, Google. Uh, Google is always your friend. Um, so you mentioned it already, Foundation Directory Online. Um, a lot of these platforms, and Foundation Directory Online is the largest platform, are um, actually paid. So Foundation Directory Online is also more affordable. So if, if you're serious about grant writing, I would always recommend um, getting a subscription to Foundation Directory Online. But if you're smaller and really just starting out with grants, I would recommend using this platform, grantmakers.io. It's all free and has really the most comprehensive access and a searchable database to, to a lot of foundations out there. Um, what else you could do is you could ask your board members. Um, board members are hopefully usually very well connected, so they might know of opportunities that you haven't really considered yet. And one of my favorite strategies is actually to look what, at what your competitors are doing. Where are they getting their funding from? Competitors in, um, in quotation marks, because I don't believe in competition in the nonprofit space. We are all working towards the same goal. And um, I, I think this scarcity mindset is really, really harmful. So there is absolutely no problem in, in actually researching where else do they get funding from? Because that um, where else um, could you get funding from in looking at other organizations who are in a similar space? Because funders, as we learned, have a lot of um, funding available. There are lots of opportunities. So let's not um, let that hold us back. Um, because again, um, there is lots of funding available. Okay, so now we found a great opportunity. Now we need to move on to the next step, researching the opportunity. Same question, um, you can come off mute or you can type in the chat. How would you research and find out more as, about a specific funder or a specific request for proposals? David says, look at their 990. Anyone else? Rachel says, look at their website, search for articles about them. Can probably also go with Marcella's answer from earlier. Um, trust, trust Google. Sarah says, see if there is someone who um, you know who works there. And uh, Sandy says, find out what their sponsor, what they look for, develop a relationship. Exactly. Okay. So what I um, 
what I suggest, Googling them never hurts. You will find a lot of things on Google. Um, the website, what sometimes happens is that, uh, what I notice with my clients is that oftentimes people stop at looking or they stop. Um, they just look at the foundation directory online information, but stop right there. And they don't do that extra work of checking, actually checking the website. The website, although might be out of date, um, it might have more information and more up-to-date information than foundation, foundation directory online. Oh, by the way, foundation directory online is also accessible from a lot of um, libraries. So here in Boston, where I am located, um, we have access to the foundation directory online at our main library branch. So it's it's only available at one branch, but you could check out, um, or you could check with your local library whether you also have um, have that sort of access. So website sometimes has more up to date or um, information, but what I also noticed is websites are still not um, the most up to date information that you can have. The most reliable information, and, and David said it earlier, is to look at the IRS document 990. I, I, I assume all of you know what the document 990 is or the form 990. For foundations, you will have to scroll all the way to the attachments at the very end, where you can find what sort of organizations a foundation has funded in the past. And that again will give you the best answer to your to the questions that you probably have at about who would be a good fit for me. It can give you also an answer on what sort of you know what grant amounts can I apply for or expect from that foundation. And um, yeah, so so the IRS 990 that is my go-to source to find out more about the funder. Okay, so now we found an opportunity, we researched, we decided this is a good fit for us. What should we do next? We need to cultivate the funder, build a relationship, as someone said earlier. Um, I think it was Rachel. So what do you do to cultivate a relationship? How can you reach out to a funder? What, how would you go about that? Sarah already said, see if there is someone you know who works for them. Any other ideas? Okay, so um, you can just go the traditional way of email. Um, some foundations are open to, to conversations with potential grantees. Some of them are not, but it never hurts to reach out. An absolutely under-leveraged way to reach out to a potential funder is picking up the phone. I think way too few people do that. And in fact, most of the people that I see struggle with, with foundations and grants just simply skip this entire stage. They go directly from finding to writing the grant. And this cultivation um, stage is so, so, so important. And actually um, also a pity that some foundations are, are not necessarily open to it. That's, that's one of the obstacles. Um, but in the absence of being able to cultivate a relationship, we need to invest more time in the finding and researching stage, obviously. But still um, try to email them, pick up the phone, and then connections. So how can we find connections? Usually at a big foundation, at a large foundation, you will have someone who, um, who administers the foundation, who manages all the relationships, and then you have the decision makers, the trustees. And connections to either of them are very, very valuable. And of course, you can always go through your board members, see who they know. Um, but what I actually find the, the most straightforward or the most effective strategy is to 
um, go through, again, Google and especially through LinkedIn. So what I used to do when I was a grant writer for Boston Scores, I used to include links to LinkedIn profiles of trustees and foundation staff members in our weekly board updates so that our board would um, so that it would be really easy for our board to actually click on the link and see whether they have any sort of connection to, um, to a trustee or a, or a foundation staff member. And um, as you probably know, trustees or board members of foundations are oftentimes volunteers. So they have a professional, um, a professional life, a professional side of um, their work as well. So that's how there are often um, times connections after all, even if your board says, no, I don't know anyone at this, um, at this organization, but they might have a second um, or third connection and might be able to, um, to make a connection after all. So that's a cultivation piece. Um, let's um, move ahead. Oh, and then site visit. Um, I think David from, from Good Sports is on today. Um, I think Good Sports is doing a really, really great job in actually doing site visits um, with found with nonprofit organizations, and you know, actually building that very personal relationship with their grantees. And yeah, so the last bit is then, of course, I mean, after you know, have a really, really good understanding of what the foundation wants, you talk to someone. You're pretty sure that um, there is funding available. You know when to apply. You know um, how much to apply for. Um, you know exactly what to write. You just have to piece it all together. And um, it all flows. And I can only emphasize it um, from the alignment that the glove, just keep the glove in mind. It needs to be hand in glove. The alignment will, will tell you what to write. And then it's only about following the guidelines Usually you have guidelines published on the website um, or within the application portal. Um, what else you need to do is obviously answer all the questions. I'm saying obviously because I see it all the time. I'm a volunteer grant reviewer for Unfunded, a great organization. If you have unfunded proposals, you can submit them for, for review. I'm, I'm also doing this um, with my business as well. Um, and I see it all the time that the foundation obviously has very clear ideas what they want to know from their grantees. And they ask all these questions for a purpose. And I see all the time that nonprofits don't answer all the questions. So do me a favor, next time you write a grant proposal, please go back and read the questions word by word, line by line, so that you really make sure that you answer all the questions. Okay. Um, finally, something that especially beginners in grant writing often do wrong in my, in my um, perspective and, and from my experience is that they try to be extra academic and very, very professional to show that they take this seriously. And that's, of course, great. But you also have to remember trustees are volunteers. And you never know, maybe this the person who reads your proposal and evaluates the proposal just had lunch. So you need to convey whatever you, you, you want to convey in such a way that people can actually follow you. So try to avoid um, acronyms, try to avoid jargon, just keep it conversational. That's totally appropriate because the most important thing, and here we, we are coming to the last point, is that you make sure that you answer the five W's. What are you going to do? Why are you going to do it? Where are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? And who is going to be involved? And how are you going to do it? You need to make sure that you answer all these questions. And, um, and again, think from the funders perspective, make sure that they get your point. If they don't get your point, they cannot, they, it will be hard for them to fund you because they, in order to fund you, they, they, they also want to see, is this actually a hand that fits in my glove, right? So keep it conversational, straight to the point, answer the five W's and how, follow the guidelines, answer all the questions. And that is the recipe to winning a grant. It's not so much about the writing. 
your the majority or the 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 most of your effort should actually go into finding researching and cultivating the relationship okay so um what to do if it says not to ah we have a question here i think yeah i can i can answer one or two questions if you want to um answer uh, if you want to drop your answers in the chat uh, sorry your questions in the chat um i can quickly answer them for you so what to do if if it says not to con contact Yes, that is a common problem. I think it's a pity because we can all only benefit from, from establishing a relationship and getting to know each other to save each other's time. Because why would foundations want to review proposals on, on their spare time, right? It, it, trustees are oftentimes volunteers um, when you're actually not a fit. So I, it, 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 yeah, it irks me a little bit um, that that sometimes foundations actually say, okay, don't contact us um, in advance. So what do you do? You can still try to see whether you know someone internally with the LinkedIn strategy that I just told you. Um, that will be the most effective way for you. Otherwise, again, as I said, in absence of the opportunity to cultivate, to reach out, to build a relationship, I would invest more time in really understanding what does this funder want. Okay. One more question. Anyone questions? Okay, so I hope this was uh, straightforward. Um, thank you for joining. Um, how to go from here? Um, some of you might have seen, I have um, a Facebook group that Rachel is in, some of, the, um, some of the other participants are also in this Facebook group, feel free to join, um, the Facebook group is called Fundraising for Busy non Nonprofit Executives, I will also send you the link later on when I send the recording, and if you're interested in a free grant audit, I currently have five spots available, so reach out to me if that is of interest to you. Um, you have my email address here, but again, I will send you the link to this recording and yeah, reach out if you have any questions. I'm always here to help um, and it was great seeing you all. Bye. <laughs>